Anthony, the internet politician here, and as I record this video, it is after midnight on Monday, September 16, 2024. After the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump's life in July, I had created a video about my take on Thomas Crook's situation. That video will now be attached to the end of this one. It wasn't scheduled to come out for a little while, but uh, now that this has happened, I guess it's uh, on to the second assassination attempt on Trump's life. Ryan Routh, 58, was found hidden in the bushes behind a fence on the periphery of a golf course where Trump was golfing on the afternoon of Sunday, September 15th, 2024. From the distance of approximately 500 yards from Trump, a Secret Service agent noticed a rifle poking through the bushes. That uh, Secret Service agent then fired a shot. When detected, Ralph uh, fled in a vehicle and then was later caught in traffic. He had left at the scene an uh, 8K style rifle with a scope. Uh, based on preliminary estimates, Ralph was within range to fire on Trump. Right now, they're not quite sure if he even tried. I feel like since they didn't make mention of a muzzle or anything, it, it just it sounds like he hadn't fired a shot. Anyway. Uh, Ralph built houses for a living, and his social media made it clear that he was not a fan of the former president. And an affiliated voter being in 2012, Ralph did initially vote for Trump in 2016, and later changed his view as a result of Trump's actions while he was in office. Uh, Ralph had moved from North Carolina to Hawaii this past spring. Uh, Ralph's former neighbors in North Carolina described him as someone who kept primarily to himself. Uh, he had a gun collection and loved to show it off. However, he was quick to anger and called the police on his neighbors whenever they did anything that upset him. Ralph also had a number of run-ins with federal and local law enforcement throughout his life. Uh, Ralph's oldest son called his father loving and caring. Uh, he believes that things may have simply been blown out of proportion. And my response to that is, was he sh like, this is the worst golf course to be hunting quail. Like if that was, if that, is that a thing they do wherever they are in Florida? Uh, unlike with crooks, this sounds to me like Ralph was actually looking to assassinate the former president for political reasons. His social media indicated that he may have been looking for a cause in which to die as an example. Uh, one of the examples, uh, which you can read in a few places, is that he actually asked if anybody knew a way for him to get to the Ukraine so he could participate in that war. So it's just something to think about. Perhaps he was just looking to be a hero. His job was building houses for low-income individuals, so maybe that just wasn't fulfilling enough for him. If not to assassinate Trump, what else was Ralph in Florida for? A former neighbor said that he moved to Hawaii to be with a woman. Maybe that relationship ended and he decided to go out in a blaze of glory. It's not unheard of. Unlike with Crooks, I don't have the feeling that this was a kid who, who was messed up and was just looking for a way out. Uh, this, I, I, I'm, I find it unlikely to believe that, and if I'm wrong, I'll apologize in a comment or something, I don't know, that Ralph wasn't looking to end Trump's life. I don't, I don't know why he, when he had the opportunity and within range didn't fire, maybe he had to change a heart and this was like, you know what, I'm just going to camp here. But then if he would have le not left his barrel in, maybe he was looking for, like crooks, somebody just to take him out. There's it, just still so many unanswered questions. And this guy, unlike crooks, has a history of going pro-Trump than anti-Trump. Uh, going Democratic, voting Democratic causes. Uh, I think he actually donated money to the same place crooks actually did. So it is an interesting story to say the least, but it, it brings up a, a thought that occurred to me, which is why I decided instead of just ignoring it and, you know, the Crooks video is supposed to go up at the end of the month, uh, combine the videos. And the thought is that I, I mean, victim blaming and all, but rhetoric hurts people. There are people in here in Ohio, in Springfield, that are being assaulted because people believe they're eating their pets. It's not innocent. We got the freedom of speech, but it's not supposed to be this way. You're not supposed to say things or do things that negatively physically impact anybody. I mean, obviously, you could tell the truth all day, but when you're making up lies that actually hurt people who are innocent, 
this is where I go. I, I kind of leaning towards Trump is doing this to himself. And the polls are so close right now that let's say Trump did get into office. Who's, who's not to say that this is going to stop? Who's that to say it's not going to get worse? And this is this is where we are in the world now. Like we, yeah, we we had JFK, RFK, uh, assassination attempt on Reagan, uh, other presidents before them, but uh, two on the same guy, kind of like months apart. Again, crooks, you kind of random number generator, and Trump happened to be the number. But uh, I feel like crooks might have made it seemed more plausible. And if in fact, uh, Ralph saw that and said, well, if he can almost do it, I, I think we've created a precedence and it's not comfortable. I don't, I don't think it should be something that is regular for us. It really shouldn't be. Anyway, as I said before, um, I'm going to throw at the end of this, the, uh, crooks video. Yeah. It, it's a strange time. I am Anthony, the internet politician, and I kind of want to talk off the cuff you know i have very minimal minimal scripting going on here and i'm probably not going to edit this video very much but uh, talk about the assassination attempt against donald trump there's just a lot of misinformation there and i'm, I'm gonna compile mentally out loud for anybody who wants to watch me you know fumble with this uh essentially why i think the attempt by thomas crooks to assassinate donald trump senior was not political. So let's start off, you know, a couple years ago, Crooks is in high school. The friends described him as quiet, uh, conservative, uh, kept to himself. He was nice enough. Okay, fine. So he was a loner. You know, a lot of people like being alone. It's fine. It's, you know, not a problem. You know, you don't instantly go, well, this guy's going to shoot up a school one day. He's a loner. Fine. He's a conservative loner. <laughs> I was like, just put that in your head there uh why is why is he conservative well chances are because his family his parents are republicans uh they have conservative ideals uh, his father is a member of a gun range he has a, a small armament of guns it's his right as a citizen to have guns so we get to the weeks running up to the assassination attempt and um the FBI has revealed that the kid has been looking up on his phone uh, how to handle depression, how to get help. Uh, he's also looked up both Democratic and Republican candidates who may be stopping in Pennsylvania near his home. So it wasn't just Democrats. It wasn't just Republicans. Uh, he, basically, it was, it was a matter of convenience for him. It was um, time and place. The sooner the better and if he can get there. So it just happened by sheer coincidence that Donald Trump rally would just was right, you know, an hour from his house. Now, some people are going to argue, but he donated to a liberal cause. Who cares? I sometimes vote for Republican candidates because I like them as people better. Uh, or I, well, when I was a Democrat, I did. Or as a Republican, I also voted for Democrat. I'm an independent now. But the point is, no one is strictly down one line. I don't think there is anybody on this planet who agrees 100% with every issue a political party has. And if there are, well, good for them, but they're probably very few. So we continue on the kids looking up uh, times and places. Uh, eventually he settles on Trump as his target. Doesn't matter who Trump is other than a notable politician. And the kid picked these people and particularly Trump because he knew that he wouldn't survive. It was essentially his solution to not getting therapy. It was, I don't want to be here anymore and the, I can't commit the act myself. So I need someone else to do it for me. So he goes out to the campgrounds where the event will be held later in the day. He, he scopes it out, sees how the buildings are arranged. Uh, this is where we get to the secret service and local law enforcement being a problem. The secret service. They knew the whole area of the landscape, but they left the area in which uh, Crooks eventually uses on Saturday, July 13th, 2024 to attempt the assassination. And law enforcement, the local law enforcement, for some reason, their sharpshooters were in the building. They weren't on top of the building. They were in the building. When Trump was out on the podium, those sharpshooters should have been on the building. 
this kid had it easy. Once he scoped the place out, apparently he had already developed a number of explosives and a drone and other plan Bs just in case he survived the first thing. He goes back home, grabs all that stuff, puts it in the car, somehow sneaks it past his parents. His dad hands him a shotgun because I guess he was under the... Uh, uh, he believed that his son was going to go to the gun range to practice, something he did on the regular. Uh, so the kid goes off, drives towards the fairgrounds uh, an hour away, hits up a ammo store, and continues on. He is an adult. He can buy ammo if he wants to. And so he gets to the grounds. Uh, he starts poking around. He uh, doesn't have anything on him yet. People start wondering why this guy in, in camo and a, um, a T-shirt um, is like, you know, bothering the poker. Like he's outside of the area where the the crowd is, because there's like the people who are in the event and the people who are on the periphery. And a few people alert law enforcement. Hey, what's going on with that guy there? What's, who's he? What's he doing? But it really they they put him on the radar, but not enough to do anything because you, you can't arrest anybody for thinking about something, right? So then the kid goes back out to his car, grabs his instruments, and heads back to the buildings where he grabs a ladder and inevitably climbs it where more people are telling law enforcement, hey, look on the roof. So we get to around uh, 6.05ish and Trump has taken the stage. Uh, the kid is pretty much in place at this point. Pulls out his rifle and within about six minutes, around 6.11, uh, he takes his shots. He takes multiple shots. Uh, he, he, um, now there's an argument about if it was a piece of glass or an actual bullet that whizzed past Trump's ear, but uh, we know that he has like a scratch or something where stitches was uh, applied uh, across his earlobe, so he, he was hit by something. Not really important what it was, but the kid basically sprayed and prayed, and the end result was he got the attention of Secret Service, who then inevitably uh, took him out. So as we know, the Secret Service jumps on Trump because Trump right away. Uh, within a few seconds kind of realized what was happening I think he heard the chaos to his side I don't know if he saw the man who was protecting his family who ended up being shot in the head uh, but uh, was aware enough to get down Secret Service jumped on top of him and then eventually once they were confirmed to have uh, ended the life of the assassin uh, or attempted assassin walked him away to the armored SUV it was not politically motivated the guy needed help, and he didn't feel like he had any opportunity to get some. He felt like he had no choice. And he was in the mindset of, you know what, if I'm going to go, I'm going to take as many people with me as possible. Uh, and, you know, why not let people know my name, you know, be an infinite. Uh, we know John Wilkes Booth because of who he assassinated. We know Sirhan Sirhan because of who he assassinated. So... I get it. You, you, you're not happy with the world and you want everybody to suffer with you. That just seems to be the take I have. It wasn't political. The kid needed help. He didn't know how to get it. And here is where we are. And be, I think because of that realization, now that we're looking at it two and a half, three weeks later, this now being early August, the realization that really nobody else is talking about it other than maybe some people in the, the MAGA uh, atmosphere um, because that that's fear of influence they're gonna go well you know he survived a uh, an assassination attempt so he must be uh, he must be ordained by some entity I none of the typical Republicans and, and none of the Democrats are talking about it anymore it is history but we still have people who are dwelling on this it, it wasn't political as a guy and as a guy who in his teens was depressed and on Prozac and by the way, don't don't let Prozac dissolve on your tongue. It makes your tongue numb. Anyway, when you feel like there is no one out there that can help you or understand you, you do stupid things. Uh, as a kid, I did stupid things. I mean, this kid was only 20. And uh, based on the comments of his former classmates, it kind of sounds like he's always felt like he's alone. It's him against the world. And we, we shouldn't be playing the pol pol uh, politics game, you know, being political about it. We should be more open to helping other people who might be in need because uh, that is really important here and a, a site that i uh, used to recommend uh, back in the old uh, gaming days was uh, nami.org n-a-m-i.org 
back when I was a teenager and I was first on the internet, uh, we would occasionally hear about uh, kids who off themselves. And so we did a fundraiser for other kids. Um, we're talking early 90s when text-based games were still a, a thing on the internet. And um, NAMI was the, the group we were donating to. And uh, they're the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And been around for quite a while. Obviously, if I'm talking about the 90s, it's, it's been over 20 years. I, if, if you don't think you can help somebody yourself, I, I, I would direct them to that. I do not recommend better health uh, just for the records reasons and how they scrutinize their uh, therapists. Uh, I think that's a bad path. Uh, if you have insurance, and this, we're talking about your kids here, uh, they're covered up until the age of 26 usually uh, if they go to college. You can ask your provider for recommendations for your child. There are plenty of good child therapists out there. If your kid is a young adult, same thing. If your kid is in college or even in high school, sometimes they can get help from individuals there. Uh, the college I went to, you could actually uh, get connected with uh, somebody who could help you if you're having issues. Uh, I, I don't know if that's common with all schools, but uh, a number of them, um, particularly the um, graduate and, and my um, undergraduate schools did. So, I mean, there's just many opportunities. You just need to see the signs and help them find help. Tell me in the comments your thoughts in this video. Did you like what you saw and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.